Greetings, friends. It's Denise again with Denise's Dancing Paintbrush and another collage. This cute little boy I started uh, the collage for about, oh, well, more than a week ago, probably two weeks ago. And um, so many things have been happening with two art shows going on at the same time this week. It was a lot for me to do. Um, a lot of paintings to get ready to hang and I did sell a few things so um, that was that was lovely small things but it was very pleasant and so I've gotten back to finally finishing this piece and uh, as usual I start with the background the tan backgrounds are really pleasing me I know this is like with the sixth or seventh one with the same well similar backgrounds when you're collaging, you know, the paper is never the same. It's similar, maybe. But the tan is very pleasing. I may get back to some dark backgrounds when the winter comes, but for now. Um, this earthy, dusty color <laughs> is, very, is pleasing to me. And it's light. The dark ones start to get me down, even though um, the subject matter really pops. I'm using very, very deep reds and burgundies for the shadows on this little boy's face, and uh, brown, of course, around his his knitted cap. The funny thing is. You, you will see I put a, a red piece for the shadow under his nose and I had every intention to go back and put some little brown nostrils or dark, dark brown, probably bat, close to black. However, I completely forgot and it, I didn't even notice until I was putting this footage together that I never, I never gave him nostrils. Okay, it's so it's a partly finished piece like the magic paintbrush. Um, and have you ever heard the story of the magic paintbrush? It's a really charming story, um, a Chinese uh, story about a little boy who was an orphan who wanted nothing more in all the world than to have a, his own paintbrush and learn to paint. He went to the local school, but they turned him away because he had no money. He earned his meager living gathering sticks and, um, and wood in the forest to sell as kindling. And he would earn just enough to buy something to eat, and he would roll out his straw mat and sleep in the forest at night. But each night he would think about how much he wanted to, he wanted to draw. He would use sticks in the sand by the riverbank to draw things, but to have his own paintbrush, oh, what a marvelous thing that would be. And so one night while he was sleeping, he dreamed that a crane flew out of the moon and landed right beside him. A crane, of course, is good luck in Chinese culture and a man a very old man with a beard got off the cranes back and said to the boy you've been kind and good all your life and so it has been granted to me to give you this magic paintbrush but you must only use it for good when he woke up in the morning he thought what a wonderful dream that was and yet sitting beside him on his mat was a paintbrush and he was overjoyed so he went to the marketplace and bought himself some paper and started to draw he drew the first thing that he thought of which was the crane that flew out of the moon in his dream as soon as he finished the last line on the drawing the crane became alive and flew off of the paper and flew away Wow, he said to himself, this is a magic paintbrush. And so 
He thought, I, I know, I could draw for people and make a little money instead of gathering wood in, in the forest. But the first thing he did was he drew some, you know, toys, some balls and dolls and things like that for the other orphan children that he knew, and he gave those away. But he never showed them how he got these real live things by just drawing them. And then he would draw for people in the town. In order to keep the item that he was drawing from becoming alive, he never quite finished it. He would leave something off, a line not finished, or an eye not finished, or, or a nostril not finished. And so um, he made a very nice living and was doing very well until one day the accident happened. As he was finishing a drawing a crane, a drop from his paintbrush accidentally dropped right where the second eye should be and the crane became alive and flew off of the paper and then the whole town knew it, the secret was out and it got around to the emperor. The emperor called for the boy and wanted him to make, well, of course, gold and things for him. But the boy knew that he couldn't make things that were for someone else's good. It, it must only be for good that he used his paintbrush. So, as you can probably tell, things don't work out well for the emperor. And so I'll have to tell the rest of the story another time. Thank you everyone for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this collage. Do check out my links. I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.